I'm Russ Kickwood on this episode of American Reef. We're going to head back over to Mike Paletta's. We're going to check out that upgraded sunlit soft coral tank of his. Say that fast 10 times. Um, also, if you're looking for what I consider the best fish food on the planet, head on over to AmericanReefHPD.com. The fish food itself is called American Reef HPD. Um, I'm still getting quite a few emails asking where I can get American Reefs HPD. Um, so that's why I add it to these videos. I'm um, not exactly sure how I can communicate it clear, so I'm open to suggestions on that one. Um, again, it's uh, AmericanReefHPD.com. So uh, again, if you have any questions, concerns on that one, suggestions, let me know how I can get that message out there a little bit better. But again, if you're looking for that food, it's AmericanReefHPD.com, one word. Um, that being said, let's kind of start spinning up that video of uh, Mike Paletta's new upgraded soft coral tank. Before we head on over to see that tank, um, if you haven't seen the first video, approximately eight months ago, we actually shot a video where Mike did a tank swap. He started with a smaller, shorter tank, and basically what we did is we swapped it out for a taller tank. The reason why is because the, the coral were growing out of the tank. And um, he had the space, so why not basically add uh, more water volume to the tank and get a bigger tank in that room. And so this video is about eight months afterwards. Um, it was shot in the springtime of 2017. It was late spring, but spring nonetheless. Um, so you can kind of see the progression, right, of that tank. Uh, and like I said, it was probably somewhere around uh, seven to eight months after we did that tank swap. Um, you know, again, Mike is uh, available, you know, pretty much available on Facebook, et cetera. So if you have any questions, Feel free to ask him, you know, he's always speaking, that sort of thing. But uh, you'll kind of use these videos as a good reference point to kind of say, hey, you know, if you take and move the tank, what can you expect as well? And um, I think you'll be surprised by the, uh, the results of this particular tank move and kind of what has happened. You know, one of the interesting parts, at least, that you'll see here is, um, as expected, he needs to add more flow, right? Um, so he's actually using the new uh, Tunzi Stream 3 in this one, and he'll be adding it to this tank just to, again, compensate for what you would expect, growth. But rather than talk about it, let's kind of see what's happening in that tank. <music> follow-up Russ on a number of different reasons for the sunlight tank okay it's been three four five months since you've seen right, it last right. uh, it was the dead of winter and even during the dead of winter the growth in this tank has still been good it was obviously a warmer winter than usual here in Western Pennsylvania mm -hmm. so the tank got a lot of sunlight everything for the most part is doing well but there's a few things that need tinkered with one I got lazy and I let the magnesium level drop in this tank to under 1200 so I've gradually been bringing that up. What happens for me, and may it happen for you too, <laughs> is when the magnesium level gets below 1,200 or so, I suddenly start growing weird algae in the tank. So I was growing the, the thick, matty, nasty algae in the tank. I have raised the magnesium up to 1,450. That algae has gradually started to die off, but as it has done so, I have started to get some cyanobacteria in the tank just from the amount of nutrients being released from the dying of the algae. Mm -hmm. So now I'm treating that with my old standby hydrogen peroxide dun, dun, dun. that you buy for a dollar at the dollar <laughs> store. So I'm buying stock in them for all the stuff I sell. <laughs> but the uh, hydrogen peroxide, dose it twice a day. I dose it once at night, once in the morning. Uh, it takes about a week to ten day, a week to two weeks to wipe it all out, mm -hmm. but eventually it kills off the cyano. I wish I came up with this. 
but online there's a guy named T. Willard who is a master of killing mm -hmm. off algae, <laughs> and he came up with that treatment. So I don't want to neglect someone. I've never met him or talked <laughs> to him, but I follow his recommendations because he he's seems to be the wizard of algae <laughs> killing. So I appreciate people that are good at what they do, and he's excellent at what he does. Okay, so, but we got to pause. There's a couple things. Number one, so why you said you let your you got lazy? You let your magnesium drop. The salt mix I use right. is Instant Ocean. Instant Ocean has low magnesium levels. Mm -hmm. Usually, I add to magnesium into the makeup sure. bin when I'm sure. making it. I got lazy because of travel and other things. Sure. So over the course of six months, it gradually came lower. That caused the algae to grow. The yeah. other thing is. I don't have what I consider adequate water flow in this tank. Okay. When I say that, I recently did an article for Reef to Reef where I looked at the parameters of eight masters and all of them were running for between 10 to 12 times as the low end of water turnover per hour in their tank to as high as Sanjay running 60 times per hour in the tank. And by having that much water motion in the tank, the tritus didn't settle out, it got sucked up into the filters, Everything was much better with more water motion. So that's the other reason why I started getting some algae sure. build up is I had to try this build up. And we saw that when we moved the tank, right? Yeah. I mean, we, just saw we saw how much gunk had settled into the tank. Right, right. So in this regard, what I'm doing, I'm adding the new Tunzi Stream. Ooh, hold it. You're like one of the few on the, in the United States to got a Stream 3. I got a new Stream 3. Okay. It's going to go in the back bottom of the tank, and it's going to crank the flow around so that the tritus won't have a time to settle in the bottom, but it will tend to be taken out by the two overflow boxes at the back, go into the uh, mud filter, all the critters down there will go crazy, living off all the detritus <laughs> that goes through, rather than me having to siphon it out all the time. And by doing that, I'm expecting to have a lot easier time battling things like algae and stuff, because I wanted the detritus built up in the tank. Right. Also, one of the things I'm trying this year... Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's go back there. Okay. So we hit that magnesium piece, and then you said, oh, you're raising it. Right. Now, I know you can't raise it up too high, or all your little crustaceans are going to die. Talk about right. that. Right. I try to get it between 14 and 1,500. 1,450 okay. to me is like the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I get good calcification on the corals. I don't get the algae growth that I do with low levels. Mm -hmm. The problem, though, is, is when I get that up, I start getting faster growth of everything. So one of the things I also have to do, and one of the reasons why I want more water motion, is to assess how fast that growth's going. So what I plan on doing is taking a picture of this tank every month for the next nine months, starting April 1st, here's April, here's right. May, here's June, and show how fast everything is growing. Because I'm really not adding any more corals to this tank. There's really not a whole <laughs> lot of room. I am adding a few more fish. Uh, next week I'm adding uh, another 10 blue-eyed cardinals, because the school of blue-eyed cardinals is pretty cool. I'm putting in a pair of flame wrasses. I'm putting in a hooded wrasse. I'm putting in a yellow tang. A few other colorful odds and ends. Nothing really big mm -hmm. physically, but enough to add a little bit more to the tank. I mean, obviously, there's a lot going on in this tank now, and I'm pretty happy with it. Right. But I think that'll be like the piece de resistance mm -hmm. to finish off the tank and make it really nice. Right. And I've also gone to a four times a day automatic feeder in addition to the three times a day that I'm feeding it. So now the tank is getting fed seven times a day. I want to see if the theory is you can feed as much but more frequently or even more and more frequently and your nutrient levels go down. So I'm also assessing whether that works on this tank and on another tank downstairs. Okay, hold it. So you mean by raising your flow? By raising my flow, I'm taking out the detritus, yep. and by feeding small amounts more often, which is what we've all been told since right. we had guppy tanks, right. you know, in childhood. Because right. fish's stomach is basically as big as their eye, right. so they can't eat that one big smorgasbord. We tend to all feed them. So I'm feeding a small amount, uh, roughly five grams, four times a day, mm -hmm. and then I'm feeding the typical frozen mysis or other frozen foods three times a night when I'm home. So in that regard, what I'm hoping to do is cut down on the nutrients because what I'm hoping is I don't have to clean the glass every day like I did last summer. Yeah. Because as everyone yeah. knows who's ever put a tank in sunlight, <laughs> the thing that happens in sunlight is, what, class? The glass gets dirty every day. Right. Nobody likes cleaning the glass on a tank every day. Right. So I'm now down to cleaning it every three days. I'm also going to start running a nano bubbles into this tank. I haven't done that so far. That is the next thing to see if that also reduces how frequently I have to do this. 
I haven't run it on here because the theory had always been if you run nano bubbles in a soft coral tank or any kind of bubbles in a soft coral tank, you're going to have issues with them irritating the soft corals sure. and they're never opening up. Sure. So I'm going to run that to see what happens. Uh, obviously, I am always playing with stuff, so this is just a new toy. Sure. I mean, I basically had an extra air pump. I bought some new wooden air stones, yippee, <laughs> and put those on here and see what the outcome is. I also want to see that. I just am uh, putting it on actually after this filming because I want to see if that also has an effect on sure. the uh, cyano, which is the, in theory it should. Sure. So the, obviously lots going on in this tank because I always have lots going on with all my tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I play with. This is uh, <laughs> something to keep me entertained. It's what I do. Yep. Okay, so back to the feeding. You're saying that by feeding smaller, you can feed more. So that's right. what we're testing there. It has nothing to do with the flow. Right. You're, okay. This, yeah, this is separate. just to, to see it. what the nutrients levels are, because the nutrient levels aren't going to change with flow for the most part. Right. Nutrients are nutrients, but if I have a more efficient use of the food, mm -hmm. in theory, the nutrient levels will go down. Sure. I don't want zero nutrients now. We've all learned from... Reading everything that's out there, you don't want zero nitrates and zero phosphates because those are actually the energy sources for these corals to grow. Right. I want them low because I don't want these corals growing out of the tank by the end of the summer because I'm not going to a, a 240-gallon <laughs> high tank next because that's just out of control. I mean, obviously, I'm out of control, but we don't want to do that here. So it's going to be interesting to see and also interesting to see how fast these corals grow over the summer. It's still March. It's still Spring just started last week. Sunlight is only an hour and a half, two hours per day, direct sunlight on this tank. Versus come May, June, July, August, when there's four to six hours of direct sunlight a day, everything just goes Right, right. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens in here. Okay, so then you're, you're basically testing three things out. More flow, more food, but smaller feedings. Right. And then the, uh, the small macro nano, nano, nano bubbles. bubbles. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, with all of them, the idea is, Cleaner water, but at the same time not irritating the corals. And right. I mean, I'll know right away if the nanobubbles have irritated the corals. I mean, you sure. can see everything's out. If suddenly everything's retracted, okay, the nanobubbles come off. Sure. That's not a biggie. Sure. With adding more flow, I'm going to see real quickly, am I getting uh, detritus on the bottom? Am I having cyano on the bottom? Because in certain areas here, there's some cyano buildup. If I suddenly have more flow, is that going to go away? Because cyanide does not like strong flow. Right. And three, the small, the more frequent feeding, because I'm going to have a few more fish in here, feeding more often. There's actually a paper that talks about you can do continuous feeding and basically double the dose of when you're doing small amounts and get lower nutrient levels. Because the fish are more efficient in consuming it, they're not, everything's not decomposing into ammonia, sure. and everything's not going through the whole cycle. So this is a paper I read like 10 years ago. Sure. This is not relatively recent, right. but we've all been told since we were little kids, like I said, small amounts more often is better for the fish. I'm trying to put that into practice. And you know, when you think about it, it makes sense because even as, as humans, right, every what, every two, three hours, your body basically kicks back on instead of going to sleep and it processes things more efficiently. So. Yeah, so yeah. with fish that have a much higher metabolism sure. and everything else, it's going to be interesting to see. Sure. Okay, so... As far as the tank, now that you've increased the size, what are the gotchas, right? In other words, you were like, man, I wish I would have thought about this before. In the summer, it still gets warm, and it's harder to cool a bigger tank. Okay. So basically what I'm doing for most of the summer is the doors will be open, which isn't the best look, and there's going to be a, a bigger fan down there this year okay. to keep it cool. Uh, I keep my house at around 74, 76 with mm -hmm. air conditioning, basically as soon as it gets hot. So that's not an issue. But it's this time of year when it's 70 degrees, 75 degrees out, and I don't sure. have the air conditioning on. If I don't have a good cross breeze in here, because right now I have the windows gone because there'll be birds singing and you won't hear me. Sure. The temperature will get to 81, 82. Mm -hmm. 82 is the max I want on this tank. Yeah. So right now the fan's going on this week. Today's the last warm day. It's 70 degrees, and it's going to be in the 50s and 60s for the next two weeks. I'm fine, but I'm going to start fine-tuning the temperature control on here. Makes sense. And as far as your magnesium goes, now again, how long are you gonna just keep everything at, at you know at the you know? I'm gonna keep it at the 1450. For okay. I'm gonna do more frequent testing. Part of the problem is all my test kits are downstairs. I get lazy and don't bring them up here. You go, know, uh, you know, right, it's right. a big effort to carry those little boxes up here. 
So are we all, I mean, it's because it's, it's, the, the tank language. looks good. Why fool around with it? You don't right. need to test anything. Everything's, no, that's not how it works. Right, right. So I, I bought a whole new set of test kits just for up here. So I will have the test kits handy. When stuff's handy, you're more likely to do it more often and e easily. So. Right. Makes perfect sense, right? Test my alkalinity, test my magnesium, test my calcium. Uh, eventually, I've got a controller on here. Right. And, you know, measure ORP, measure pH, see how things change. But for right now, that, that will be a, a, an easy way, an easy amount of things to do. Yep, yep, exactly. to this tank now did you change anything else in other words you still using the miracle mod still have the miracle mod it's the original miracle mod it's now at 18 19 months okay uh that's going to start being changed probably i'm thinking april or may i'll probably change half of it okay i like downstairs where it's in thirds here i have two separate boxes mm -hmm. i'll take out half put another half in and so again the macroalgies same thing. Macroalgae is still thick and happy. Right. So right now that's not an issue. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the tank's running really well. Right. It's, I mean, hopefully you can see. Other than the cyano, yeah, knock on wood. But the cyano is, is not really problematic for me yeah. for the most part in a soft coral tank. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times under the bot, under the, on the uh, uh, bottom bases of uh, leather corals, you'll see a lot of cyano just because of what they produce. Right. So it's not as big an issue. On SPS tanks, it's a pain because if it grows over the SPS, it tends to kill them. And with these, it's not really an issue, but I still don't like it. Sure. sure. So now, as far as the coral, like, that grew, like, to me, the singularity is what took off. And you're, I mean, you were close to the tank, right? The singularity have, the bubble tips have. Uh, what's interesting about this yeah. star polyps is it's not an aggressive, excuse me, not an aggressive star polyps. Right. Usually everyone's afraid of keeping star polyps because it grows over everything. Yeah. This has grown maybe an inch, an inch and a half in a year. So I was going to say, since we've been here last time, now that looks actually be like doubled. It looked like way more growth there than it was in the in the shallow tank. Yeah, it, it's it's not really doubled. It's it's probably 20% okay. more, but it's not, and right. it's like an inch all around. Right. But it's not growing over stuff and killing it. It's pretty much staying where I want it. Right. The leathers here... In here, I've gotten bigger, even though this one's closed. Uh, and the nephthias yes, have grown. They're not o as open as they usually are. And I just gave a frag of this to Sanjay. This was originally one. Now there's uh, three of them. Mm -hmm. There were four of them. So it's quadrupled in terms of the number of, of branches coming off of it. Right. So the mushrooms are all doing well. Colors are real nice. Uh, the bubble coral, you can see how much that has grown. Yeah. I mean, originally that was four bubbles when I put it in here. Yeah. So, and I don't feed it specifically, but I, the tank gets enough food and stuff that it's done well and it really likes the light. Uh, beneath it is an elephant ear. It keeps getting beat up by this, like I need to move it over <laughs> a little bit, but the, it keeps getting pushed into it. And the green areas have done well. Uh, just the, what's weird is the green leather coral, which downstairs uh -huh. has grown crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the Elos tank has gone crazy. And this tank, it doesn't open up. Huh. And I don't know why. It does have cyanogrown growing over the top. That's going to be taken out. But I don't know why that has not done as well right. here as it do, has done in the other tanks. Right. Well, it, as we all know, right, mixed tanks, somebody loses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but he's leather with other leathers. He yeah. shouldn't, it shouldn't be problematic. True. True. But uh, for the most part, everything else has done well. Um, I mean, I'm real happy with how the bubble tips have done. They haven't started reproducing yet, but I'm expecting by the end of the summer, there's five of them in here now. I'm expecting I'll have eight or nine by the end of the summer because they're getting to that size. Right, right. Good deal. Now, what's interesting is they were producing bubbles all winter, and now that we're getting right. warmer and lighter, 
They've right. gone to the much thinner. Right. It'll also be interesting to see when I add more current in here, what if that changes them as well. Sure. And now, as far as kind of the feeding, even though you did you already start increasing the feeding to many? I've speed? gone to the automatic feeder four times, and, and at night they're getting uh, reef gumbo, uh, LRS, and mysis. And when did you start that whole process? First of March. Okay. And so, and that's when it's you're probably been off. three weeks. Okay. Good though. Now, as far as the uh, the tank itself. Um, when you moved it, how long before it started feeling, you know how, how corals, for example, settle in and yeah. go, ah, now I'm back. It, it took us about a month to start for them to start to, everything to expand out and open up. They, some of them, like the, the cinularias were open like two days mm -hmm. later. Right. The leather corals took about a week. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is, is coming along at different paces. Sure. I mean, uh, the good news is most of the affiliates have done well. The bad news is that the Navarca is in here. Before I started going to the freak, more frequent feeding, started nipping at them. So now that there's more frequent feeding, that has seemingly subsided. Right. But that was one of the first things that I noticed is he got bigger. He got more of a picker at Euphilia's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and hopefully that, that will stop. And I was going to say, do you expect when you add more fish in there, like, again, more aggression or anything like that, even though they're kind of milder? Fish? I am going to put them in, obviously, a like I do with all my fish. They're going into a acclimation box. Mm -hmm. They will be in there probably for a week to make sure that the fish that are in here, particularly the wrasses right. and the yellow tang, but there are, isn't another tang in here, so that, that shouldn't be an issue. But I'll let them get used to it. Once I don't see any aggression on, this, on these fish... Then you let them go. I'll let them go. Okay, so in general... If you, want to, if you want to hold on for a second, I can show you the acclimation box. Yeah, yeah, go This is the acclimation box, mounts via suction cups, which I don't like. I'm going to put my own magnets on it, hold it up, mm -hmm. put a magnet under here. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. Put the fish in here. You can drop the food right in the top. As you can see, lots of holes everywhere, so you get good flow as mm -hmm. long as you have motion going through. I'll put a, probably one piece of PVC in here. It has a uh, Separation chamber if you want to have two fish that you're afraid of. I would prefer to have they have more room. Sure. I'll put a piece of PVC in so they have a place to hide. Mm -hmm. It'll sit right up here. It'll look ugly for a week or two, but I'm more worried of keeping rare fish healthy. Sure. Because it's really using these kind of boxes. I have built my own, but it's not as nice as this. Right, the one out of egg crate? Yeah. The one out of egg crate. The problem is they can't see the fish quite as well. Right. Here they'll get used to it even better. It's big enough with the flow, it's fine. I mean, I'm not putting any huge fish into here. Right. They'll get used to it over time. Put the fish in, let them get used to it, let them get used to the food. They've already been downstairs for anywhere from three months to six weeks. Right. right. Or six weeks to three months for our English speaking <laughs> friends. And that'll, that will work out well for them that uh, everything will, is acclimated to eating and the water quality. Now they just have to get acclimated to the other fish that are in the tank. Okay. So. This has cut my losses dramatically. Yeah. If, if you take anything away from my videos, <laughs> quarantine and acclimate. Right. Get the fish used to one another <laughs> so that you don't get beat up. Because if you, act, you quarantine them perfectly, they're eating, you put them in here and they get beat up and hide all the time, guess what? They're, they're still going to die. <laughs> so you don't want dead fish. I don't want you to have dead fish. So get yourself a box like that or make your own. Right, anything. Right. Anything that gets everybody used to one another. You go a lot longer way toward keeping the fish long term, and that's what the goal is. Again, intelligent consumption. If you're going to spend money, don't throw it away. Yeah, the, the most expensive fish in the hobby is not the two dollar fish. It's a two dollar fish you replace twenty times. <laughs> that's right. So that's right. Okay, so then when we come back, right, and look at this tank, 
then we'll probably hit it around six months or something like that. And we should have the pictures of the progression. Well, the pictures of the progression, but next time you see this tank, there will also be more fish in it, hopefully. All right. So, and the corals, we'll get to see how they've grown, and you get to see everything that's going on in the tank. Good deal. And any parting words? No, as with everything, go slow, take your time. I mean, this tank is, I've taken my time putting it together. The first six months it was a disaster because sunlight and SPS corals basically give you lots of nice brown corals. <laughs> Soft corals like sunlight obviously a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, and just pay attention to don't let things slip like I did with magnesium. Little things like that that you don't pay attention to cause right. things like cyanobacteria. You know, come in, now that I think about it, it goes back to, remember when we were talking to Sanjay? Don't fight the tank. And it makes sense. In other words, to your point, you wanted to do SPS, but the location, etc., said, huh. Yeah. Don't, you know, so. The SPS did poorly in this tank. Right. I may put them on tipper or something in here just right. to see if it does okay. Right. But I'm not going to put 50 SPS frags like I did the first time, thinking, wow, this stuff's going to go nuts. No, this stuff went. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. so we're not making that mistake again. <laughs> Isn't it funny, right? All the years in the hobby and everybody still learns every day. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That will be one of my articles coming up is how do we learn. And the most <laughs> right. expensive way we learn is trial and error. <laughs> so we're, we're, I'm trying to talk to people not to do <laughs> trial and error, to learn from my mistakes and listen to other people's mistakes. And thank you for sharing those mistakes. Mike. I am not as shy that I have made many and I will probably make many more, but at least I'm trying. So, <laughs> Till next time, sir. Thanks.